the other thing is, of course, uh, do the how do you finance these films? Okay, these two films I uh, uh, self financed. Oh, self financed. Yeah. Okay. I did. I had a um, couple of people help me in India. This is but this is extended family help. Oh, okay. Um, but. Uh, primarily, it was. Uh, I said, "Okay, I'm going to leave my job. I have saved this much mm -hmm. money. I'm going to make this film." Okay. So, uh, and I don't think it's very unique in the independent films. And a lot of people have done it a lot of times. Mm -hmm. They they work for five years and then they save their money because they have the passion about this storyline. They want to tell people and they go and make the mm -hmm. film, which is what I'm doing. But I I think now I have shown with these two films what I can, what I'm capable of. Uh, I, I guess now I should go and look for producers to see whether I can actually find somebody who can invest and, and uh, do that. Oh, because okay. I, I see that as a career um, progression, progression in the sense like you can't keep putting your own money mm. and you know. Yeah. That's right. Uh, well, the thing is that uh, obviously uh, there are uh, uh, movies which are made, uh, you know, uh, 100 crores as they talk in, uh, in India basically. and. Some of the movies that I see, Bollywood movies, uh, recouping mm -hmm. uh, all that money invested in the first one or two weeks. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that is something which we are seeing in uh, India. Uh, are the Indian uh, people generally, uh, you know, for entertainment, hooked on movies, you think? I, I think they are. But I think also, I mean, they have learned this from Hollywood because mm. Hollywood did that for a long, like for, for a long time. Mm. They spruce up the release of the film to such an extent where they 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 even have the <laughs> hero of the film have a breakup just before the <laughs> release or, right. or have a, another affair before the thing. So all these are marketing strategies. So these are all geared up to make sure that people go and watch the first two weekends. Mm. So they get most of the money back. Right. There are two advantages in that. One is you get most of your money back. That's one thing. Secondly, there's no word of mouth, um, uh, word of mouth marketing involved at all, as in Nobody would expect people to say, oh, this is a good movie to go on with. So for that to happen, they have to wait for three or four weeks. Mm. So they, don't, they really don't want that to happen. Mm. They want like a quick strike, quick strike and get yeah. all the thing back. Mm. So creatively, it also influences creative, creative process as well in the sense they don't really want to develop a character. They don't want to really say, okay, should this character, uh, should this emotion be drawn to actually encompass all these other aspects mm. of the character. Those kind of things is not needed anymore mm. because there should need to be a f slick, mm. quick that's and right. done, done with it. Action. Yeah, so right. I think the Bollywood is doing the same thing now. Mm. Like as you know, when they're releasing a film, there's all this talk in every channel about that film and what's happening, how it was shot, this problem, that problem and all that. All geared as a marketing technique mm. for the first two weekends and bang. Mm. And you see a lot of films gone yeah, after right. the second week. But they would have made the money. They would have made, made the, the money. money. Yeah. To your latest uh, venture, uh, the feature film, Talana. Uh, how did you uh, envisage uh, this film and uh, how did you go about uh, filming it in Bangalore? Um, to, um, the, the original idea for the film um, came uh, to me when I was actually... It actually came when I was reading newspapers, basically. That's what happens to most of the people. Mm. And as I was reading... and What does Thalana mean? Thalana Th is... Um, uh, basically means anxiousness or, or distraught. A woman who, who, who is distraught. Yeah. Uh, and there's all these other characters in the film who are also distraught in, a, in, in their own way, in their own levels and all kinds of... So it's a kind of all-pervasive... Um, Talana is a very pure Kannada word used for that agitated yes, state, that state right. of mind. Mm -hmm. So uh, when uh, I was reading the news from India and the, this uh, human trafficking has been a big problem yes. here for, a, for a long time and especially young girls disappearing. So I, it really affected me that there's very little social, like, like public discussion about this. There's very little uh, People talk about it and 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 say why is this happening and why are we? So th that that's something I, I found very disturbing in the beginning. And then as I did more and more research, I found that it it is it's a lot more pervasive than we think. Mm. Because if the big TV uh, channels are uh, tied up with the stardom of big people, what's happening in their lives? There's all these little stories which never get told. Mm. And then I, then I, it really struck me that it's probably happening to people I know. Mm. When yeah, I go back, right. the societies I, I live with, because as you know, India, even though it, there is it's, there is this it's huge class differences, 
they're all they're interacting all the time, the different classes. Like, as you know, if somebody is working in your house and they could be coming from a different class, but you are interacting with them every yeah, day. That's right. And there's a diff So this kind of gave an idea as to look, you, when, when, we, when we come to know that it's happened to somebody we know very close, what would we do? It's all good to read it in newspapers mm -hmm. and go on, mm, this should be <laughs> happening. What happens if... So this is, this is where the idea started mm -hmm. and then I started writing that um, you set up a house, it's a middle class family and they have a maid who comes and works in their house every day and her child goes missing. And the, the, the storyline starts from there and then, okay, so what, what happens, what effect does it have on a mother, her father, the, 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 the child's father, and then the family where this woman is working, where the uh, father of the house, the, he, he is also related to that girl in mm -hmm. the way that he's teaching her, getting her books and doing projects with her. And so he's kind of had a very sweet relationship with her. So, so what happens to all these people? And, and there's this, this, this um, family also has its own problem with their daughter. So they are trying to deal with that. Mm. So I, I thought the main idea was, if it happened out there, that's fine, somebody's problem. But what happens if it's happening amongst mm. one yeah, of us? Right. And, and uh, yeah, that, that's where I, mm. the whole idea came about. Mm. So I think both looking at Mukamuke as well as Talana, you seem to be highlighting some of these social problems. That which occur on a day-to-day -day basis in our society, especially in the Indian society. Is that what you are trying to highlight in your um, films? So, see, I, I mean, social realism is something I, I like. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's part of me. So, I, 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 uh, I mean, even if I'm thinking of a fantasy story, I want somehow that to be connected to a contemporary uh, idea or a contemporary state of, situ state of society or situation in a society. So, that's, that's kind of my... Um, one of my core, uh, you know, feeling. Mm. So, yeah, I mean, in a sense, both of them have this uh, one of the aspects of the society where we don't want to look at. That's basically my idea. I mean, we, we, we'll all look at things. I mean, if somebody, um, there's a love between two young girl, boys and girls or whatever, we're all happy to see that. Mm. But I always am curious about places which we don't want to yeah, look at. Yeah, that's right. And I think, art or any art form that one of the basic work of it is to make society look at things which they mm, don't, don't want, want to look at mm. of course cinema is a very good medium to highlight those social issues isn't it yes yeah. because once you make a film you can keep you know, people can keep looking at it mm. and then they can um, draw their own uh, conclusions mm. and and mm. or inspirations or or you know whatever <laughs> rejections if they think <laughs> uh, if they don't like it but yeah and what are your future projects, Sudarshan? Well, I'm, I'm working on a couple of ideas now. Mm -hmm. uh, I have a couple of ideas to shoot in Australia. Uh, I, want, I, I want to tell a migrant story, but in not a usual migrant story as in, oh, they come here, how difficult it is, or how culturally, um, this, this cultural shock. I think that has been dealt with in with migrant stories yeah, all over the world. Right, yeah. So I'm looking at seeing the complexity of it in a very different way. Mm. Uh, so uh, what, what happens to the migrant is one aspect of it, but also what we bring in to this society, both positive and negative aspects of mm. it. So it's it's a once again I, I like to go into all these different phases of this of the problem and not just linear one problem. Mm. So yeah, I'm thinking of those couple of things, uh, and then I'm also looking at a, another film which actually happens in three different continents in Australia, India, and Africa. Oh, okay. That's a that's a longer term I'm working on. Mm -hmm. um, hopefully, I'll find somebody interested in the project, and mm. hopefully, I should be able to right. make that. And uh, of course, uh, apart from the short films you produced, uh, the other films are all in your mother tongue, Canada. Canada, yeah. Uh, Subtitled in English. Subtitled in English. But uh, are you in uh, planning to produce any of these movies in English in future? Um, you, the the ones I'm uh, plan thinking of or working on to shoot in Australia will be English slash. Mm -hmm. uh, other okay. language, right. whatever right. language. I don't know whether it will be Canada because mm. uh, it probably will not Canada or, mm. or something else. But it's, see, eventually the language should suit the environment you have picked the film yeah. for the, of course. this setting. I'm seeing that change even in uh, Hollywood movies also these days. Uh, if somebody is speaking Spanish, they make them yeah, speak, speak Spanish, Spanish yeah. or French or. Uh, and you start seeing else. subtitles on Hollywood films, right. <laughs> which was yeah. never seen before. That's and right. Yeah, yeah, That's yeah. right. 
So you you think that your future project yeah, may look so. like that? Something yeah, like? I think so. I think so. I mean, because we are going into situations where there it is not multi, it is not monolingual anymore. If I'm shooting in Australia, it's very hard as mm -hmm. a migrant to shoot in English when when you know people, husband and wife, when they are talking to themselves, will be talking will be talking in their own tongue. Different language. <laughs> yeah, they'll be talking. So mm -hmm. so yeah, if you are faithful to the settings, then you have to be faithful to the languages they speak as well. Mm. So in that sense, I think my stories will demand that they be multilingual. Mm. Uh, of course, English will be a major part of it. Uh, and then there will be other languages involved as well. So I think, uh, I don't know, Sydney, Bangalore, Mumbai, they're all cosmopolitan cities and where you cannot tell a story in one language, I think. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> if, you are, yeah, if you are involving all these different faces and it's very hard. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> U.S.'s uh, Sudarshan is a very unique story because many of the people who I talk to, some of the artists who are coming here, uh, whether they are, uh, you know, singers or dancers or whoever comes from, let's say, India or for that matter anywhere else to Australia, they virtually tend to give up that art and basically because they have come to a foreign country and uh, you have disproved all of them and you have successfully produced films. So that story, if some of the our viewers want to take a leaf out of your book, what kind of advice would you give? Oh, I mean, just don't give up your passion, mm. basically. I mean, uh, y y if, you, if you like to do something, wherever you go, you, you take it with you. I mean, you know, uh, unless you really work hard not to, mm. <laughs> not to pursue that. <laughs> That's so right. um, I, I can say, I mean, I'm not saying people will do that because I, can, I, I know the pressures you get under when you are in a different country, in well, a different society. Well, as soon as you come, you have to uh, settle down, get a job, get a house, educate the children, all those pressures will be on you, isn't it? Yeah, yeah absolutely. I mean, so it's, in spite of that, how do you overcome that and still pursue your passion? I think it's the it's a dream. I think you have to keep your dream alive. Mm. And uh, that's one thing. And the other thing is, if you have social connections with what you're trying to say, and then there is another element, another drive to your work is, for example, when I'm making Talan, I, I really wanted to tell the story. Mm. I think it is something which must be told. So that kind of, it's not, not just the passion and the dream, there's all those it's other drive, the social element of your story, which you really want to tell. Every time I have a screening, I, in the end, I talk to the audience to, to find out what they think, what they feel, because that interaction, that, that what, you know, the, what they think of, not the film, just the film, but the whole situation set up in the film. Mm. So that, that, that connectedness to the social aspects also is a drive to say, oh, I, I have want to tell this story. Mm. This is a story which has not been told, which has not been dealt with as seriously as it should be. Mm. And that also gives me energy to work. Mm. Yeah. So uh, really, if you are focused and ready to pursue your passion, nothing should come in your Nothing way. should come in your way. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Fantastic advice, sir. <laughs> Sudarshan, uh, you are an inspiration to all of us. In fact, the entire community and the work that you have done is an example of uh, how you can pursue your passion and be successful. Thanks very much for talking to us, the Indian. Thanks very much, Raj. Thanks for having Thanks me. A lot.